Headliner Nation, it's time for another mock draft here on the Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully all of you are out there enjoying your holiday weekend in some shape or form, whether you're getting out in the sun a little bit or relaxing on the couch, whatever you're doing, hopefully you're enjoying your time this weekend. And for those of you that have served in the military, thank you so much for your service, whether you are or have been, we really appreciate that from you. But we're going to be talking about another mock draft here. And if you're a part of Headliner Nation and you frequently visit the channel, you know for these mock drafts, we try to play out different scenarios every single time. So we've done a running back heavy draft. We've done a wide receiver heavy draft. And today I'm going to be ta talking about more of a balanced approach. What would you do if you kind of went back and forth with the picks? Now keep in mind, your draft is always fluid. So you have to be able to make some decisions within the draft and be willing to change your strategy. But for the sake of these videos, we're going to be trying to stick with that strategy just so you can see what it would look like if it played all the way out. Before we jump into the draft, though, don't forget, over on thefantasyheadliners.com, you can pre-order our draft guide right now for $19.99. Head over to thefantasyheadliners.com. This thing is going to be probably around 600 pages of pure fantasy football content. So you're going to want to get over there and get that pre-ordered as soon as possible so you can start getting ready for the 2020 season. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our mock draft for this episode. All right, we're going to be jumping into the mock draft now. And as always, we use Fantasy Pros for our mock draft platform and their draft wizard. It kind of keeps things slow for us and allows us to move throughout the draft and talk about it a little bit more. So for this draft, we are going to be drafting out of the two hole. So you can see where we'd be coming from that spot. It's a 12 team half PPR. The one difference the one difference that we're going to have with this draft that we've had with the other drafts is we have added a second flat flex spot. So you can see this one will be a little bit deeper. In the in the future we do plan on moving through uh moving through these drafts and doing some deeper drafts as well as some more teams. But first pick off the board as you can see, Christian McCaffrey, that's great. Saquon Barkley right now is my 1.01 overall. Nothing against Christian McCaffrey, but the last running back to go back-to-back -back seasons is the number one running back overall was Priest Holmes. So it's been a while since running backs have done that. Nothing against Christian McCaffrey, but does he see a little bit less targets? Does he see a little bit less workload now that he's got that gigantic uh, contract? We'll see. We'll just have to keep an eye on that situation. For me personally, I'm just going to keep running with Saquon Barkley because he happens to be my favorite pick so far there. Uh, at 2.11, like I mentioned, we're doing more of a balanced draft. So with that being said, I want to go wide receiver now with my next pick. Kenny Galladay is there on the board. Kenny Galladay is in for a huge year, and we haven't done it yet, but when we do our must-have videos over the summer, as we get a little bit closer to the season, Kenny Galladay, you're going to see his name pop up. I absolutely want him this season. He's going to have a huge year. I'm going to talk about it more in a future video, but this dude is going to be able to do a whole lot this year. So absolutely, I am going to pound the draft button here at this point. So just take a look. Going back over to the draft board, we've got Barkley in my first round pick, Kenny Galladay for my second round pick. You can see some of the others. We've got one quarterback off the board so far, Lamar Jackson. We've got two tight ends, Travis Kelsey and George Kittle coming off the board so far. Mike Evans came off the board here. So again, going more of a balanced approach. So I'm probably going to go back to running back here. Let's take a look over at the cheat sheets and see what we have for running back. We've got Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, definitely has a ton of potential in that offense. We've got Leonard Fournette, who last season, he's just not getting nearly enough love as he probably should, to be honest with you. he If he would have scored three to five more touchdowns than he did last year, this would be a guy that a lot of you would probably have on your draft board as a high second round pick. Todd Gurley is also right there. Right now for me... I'm going to skip on Clyde Edwards-Alaire because I don't think that this is going to be a guy that's going to be on the field 100% of the time to start the season. As the season wears on, yes, I expect more and more of him, but Damian Williams is still going to see the field at the beginning of the season. So for right now, it's, it's really between Leonard Fournette and Todd Gurley for me. 
I'm going to go with Leonard Fournette over Gurley just because of some of those injury concerns Gurley still has with the knee. With Leonard Fournette, he's still going to get a ton of work in the passing game. This is going to be a team that is going to have a defense that will be very vulnerable this year. So they're going to probably be playing from behind a whole lot. It means Leonard Fournette is going to get a chance to work, work, work in the passing game just like he did last year. And if he can get into the end zone more, again, three touchdowns last year, if he can get more towards six, seven, or eight, this is going to be a guy that at worst, at worst, is a high RB2. And I'm going to get him here in the third round. So 100%, I'm going to take him here with this pick. And then again, going with this balanced approach when it comes back to me, I'm going to be looking for wide receiver or tight end again. Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle are our tight ends that are off the board. You can see a lot of running backs. This year is going to be really heavy with the running backs. So I do highly recommend that you get at least two running backs with your three picks to begin your draft. Because, again, you are going to be running into here in the fourth round running out of some options. I like I like David Johnson being a little bit later on as a sleeper. There's some other guys down here as well. But again, I've got two potential workhorse backs right now that I don't have to worry about with Barkley and Leonard Fournette. I start getting into some of these other uh, other options down further into the fourth round, then we have then we might have some problems. So even if you want to go wide receiver with your first pick, then I would recommend going probably running back with your next two picks after that. So going with a balanced approach, I, I'm not going to go tight end just yet. Darren Waller is here. Hunter Henry. Evan Ingram is going to be my target within these rounds. Whenever he's on the field, he produces. He just has to be on the field. I'm going to go back over to wide receiver. Now, there are two picks right here I'm definitely looking at. Calvin Ridley, Keenan Allen. Devontae Parker coming off a big year, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I've seen more from Cal, uh, from Keenan Allen over the course of the last few years than I have Devontae Parker. Keenan Allen is a little bit safer for me here. Yeah, he's got Tyrod Taylor potentially to start the year. I don't think that will hamper him too much. I don't think Tyrod Taylor will feed him as much as maybe Phillip Rivers did. But as the year goes on, and if we see Justin Herbert come in as the starter, then things get a little bit better for me. Calvin Ridley is all, also right here. I like Calvin Ridley, but Calvin Ridley is the wide receiver two on his team. Keenan Allen is the wide receiver one. So here in the fourth round, you're getting a true wide receiver one. Again, Devontae Parker, probably the wide receiver one without a doubt on his team is Preston Wilson. Uh, Preston Williams is going to be healthy. If he is, then that might take a little bit away from him. Tyler Lockett's got DK Metcalf. T.Y. Hilton hasn't been able to stay healthy. DJ Chark, I've got him in the draft guide. I've got more information on him in the draft guide. I don't want to give it away all here. Stefan Diggs, he's obviously got Brown on the other side, John Brown. So I'm going to roll with an undisputed wide receiver one here and Keenan Allen in the fourth round. That's tremendous value for a guy that could potentially be that, that one that is peppered over and over and over again. So now I've gone running back, wide receiver, running back, wide receiver, staying very balanced here. I like what I'm seeing so far with this team. So now the choice is, do I continue to build on wide receiver? Because more than likely, your league, in this league in particular, you're going to start two running backs and three wide receivers. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to possibly go, since Devontae Parker, I'm going to go with Devontae Parker again. He's my wide receiver three at this point. Even if you don't absolutely love him, getting him here in the fifth round is a really good option for you. I could go with running back again if I wanted to, but I'm not. I'm not going to go with my quarterback yet. There's still a ton of quarterbacks here with a lot of upside. So give me Devontae Parker here at the fifth round, an absolute tremendous value. Yes, I went with Keenan Allen over him uh, in the fourth round, but again, I'm pulling that true wide receiver one that we've seen things from time and time and time and time again. Okay, so now we're into the sixth round here. Taking a look at the 6.11, my team again, Barkley, Galladay, Fournette, Allen, Parker. I want to give myself some running back depth here. I also want to get my tight end. I am not going with my quarterback as of yet. Okay, there is still a lot of quarterback value for me. This is a one quarterback league. There are still guys here. More than likely, a majority of these guys will be gone by the time it gets back to me. But I'm probably still going to have a shot at Stafford. 
Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill if I want. All these guys, I am just fine with being my quarterback one. So here, I'm going to go with Sony Michelle as my RB3. I I can't go with Cam Akers because he's going to have Daryl Henderson there with him, and that line is not great. With Sony Michelle, I want to go with Sony Michelle here because he's still going to be the RB1. Yeah, James White is going to get a lot of that work in the passing game, but with a with a with a quarterback under center that just doesn't have the the type of seasoning that we've seen at that position, obviously with Brady in the past, they might be they might be leaning on that run game a little bit more. With Sony Michelle, I'm absolutely going to run with him here. Last season, he did have 912 rushing yards. He only averaged 3.7 yards per attempt. So if he can get that back up over a 4.0 and be around that 230, 240 a type attempt again, if not more, he could potentially be in for a thousand yard season. So I'm going to go with Sony Michelle as my running back three here. Love that value. Okay. Now here's where we get into wanting my tight end one. Again, waiting on quarterback If waiting on quarterback isn't your thing, again, there is tremendous value here. Some of these guys are probably going to be gone by the time it gets back to me, but that's okay because I'm looking at some of these guys. I would rather take Evan Ingram here. Again, I love Evan Ingram. Hunter Henry and Jared Cook, probably a little bit more safe, but Evan Ingram is a guy that consistently, consistently puts together good performances when on the field and healthy. Same thing could end up happening again this year. I know he needs to be healthy. So later on in the draft, I'm just going to take another sleeper at tight end that I can use in his place if he were to go down with an injury. So we're going to make that pick there of Evan Ingram. And then we'll see what happens when it gets back to me. Because at this point, this is where I'll end up going with my quarterback. So quarterbacks, look at that. Drew Brees fell all the way down to us in the eighth round. I don't know. With this team that you put together, and this is why I preach a late round quarterback strategy so much for those of you in a one quarterback league, because I have reinforced my team with top tier talent and depth, and I'm going to get a legitimate quarterback one here in the eighth round, and that is Drew Brees. I'm smashing the draft button here right away, not even going to consider anything else. So I've got Drew Brees now, and then now we got to take a look at what do we want to do with our team moving forward. So we've got our three running backs. we got our three wide receivers. I don't want to go with a tight end two yet. I'm definitely not drafting another quarterback at this point. So I'm going to be looking at another wide receiver. Let's look for our wide receiver four here. Sterling Shepard, Jameson Crowder, Emmanuel Sanders, Anthony Miller, kind of those top guys here off the board. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got Keyshawn Vaughn here from Tampa Bay. Uh, I've got some value picks coming up a little bit later on that I'd rather spend on potentially. This is where I say you got to be fluid because I love Jamison Crowder right here, especially in a PPR format, a guy and in this in this in a half PPR format where we use two flex positions. Jameson Crowder is going to be almost a must start for me every single week cuz he's going to get a ton of targets. So, but over here, I've got Keyshawn Vaughn, but I've got Jordan Howard and Matt Breida that I would rather have too. Tevin Coleman could be another guy as a, as a running back four for me. But again, that's why it was so important for me to get Sony Michelle earlier because I've got three legit running back ones on their teams, and then I've got some good depth that I can add later on. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Jamison Crowder here. Again, in this half PPR format, two flex positions. He is a guy that's going to get a ton of targets. He's going to be one of my must-have picks this year as well. Absolutely love Jamison Crowder this season. I could have probably skipped on Jamison Crowder there because because I'm going to have probably some more depth here to go with later on. But again, I, I just can't pass on him there. So let's take a look at our running backs now. Who do we have here at running backs Well, when you get this late in the draft with running backs, you want to grab guys that could potentially fill in for you if there's any type of injuries during the season. And the one guy that I see here that if there is an injury could 100% step in and be a huge addition, it's Latavius Murray. So I'm going to go with Latavius Murray here for the simple fact that 
If Alvin Kamara were to miss any time, Latavius Murray is a running back one during that time. So going to go with Latavius Murray. Again, this is a pick here later on in the draft that we take so we can reinforce our team if we need help for injuries. So looking at the draft board one more time, man, I am loving my team. We'll take a look at it again here in a few minutes all the way through. But I've got four running backs now. I've got four wide receivers I'm gonna take let me let me take a quick look here at tight end and see who we have at tight end. Jaron Cook is still here. We've got Mike Jacecki, who we like a lot this year as well. So let's look at running back two. We've got a Duke Johnson, a Zach Moss, even though I'm not big on Zach Moss. Looking through here, Adrian Peterson, is he still gonna be the running back one there in Washington? There's potential for it, but I probably don't need to take that draft pick right now he's probably still going to be here a little bit later on taking a look at these wide receivers any wide receivers that i really want to add not really at this point i'm going to take jared cook um, because it's going to give me my tight end too as i mentioned with evan ingram is if you're going to take evan ingram a little bit early on like i am because of his value when he's on the field then you're going to be able to grab another tight end later on uh, Jalen Rager went off the board there. I was kind of hoping he'd make it back to me. He didn't. That's all right. No worries. I'm going to go with Adrian Peterson here. I'm going to grab Adrian Peterson. More than likely, he's still going to be the main running back to start. You know what? Maybe I'm going to change my mind. I actually might change my mind there because I see Gio Bernard sitting here. And the reason I'm thinking Gio Bernard is because of a potential Joe Mixon holdout. We've heard him say he wants a new contract. If he doesn't get it, Gio Bernard and Rodney Anderson are the two guys I'm looking at in Cincinnati to fill in that void. Rodney Anderson, I talk about him more in the draft guy, but Gio Bernard would really be that pass catching back to give Joe Burrow a little bit of a safety net. So I'm actually going to go with Gio Bernard here just in case there is a Joe Mixon holdout. If that happens, Gio Bernard is an excellent pick here in the 12th round. I don't like going defensive <laughs> defensive special teams here. I don't think it's really time for a kicker as of yet. We're in the 13th round. We still have several picks. And this is why I like doing these uh doing these drafts a little bit deeper so you can see. Well, um, we just took Gio Bernard here for our running backs. Another running back that I see too that I'm going to take here in the late rounds. Anthony McFarland Jr. If anything happens with James Conner, Anthony McFarland is going to be a guy that is absolutely going to go bananas on the field this year. So again, another value running back pick late that could potentially step in and help out at some point is going to be Anthony McFarland. So that's why I'm grabbing him here late. And when you get to these late picks, yeah, it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of what ifs. But that's okay. That's why that's why we're talking about some of these late-round picks. And I already know who I'm taking with this pick as well. I'm going with Alan Lazard. Probably the wide receiver, too. Yes, over Devin Funches in Green Bay. I'm going to go with Alan Lazard here. You could go with Paris Campbell as well. But Alan Lazard, I like a little bit more right now because uh, of Aaron Rodgers and what he's had to say about him. Again, I think he's a guy that over Devin Funches right now is going to be a little bit more trustworthy for me. So I'm going to take Alan Lazard this late in the draft. We'll take a look at my team here one more time. At the draft board, we've got three picks left. Yes, I've not taken a kicker yet. Yes, I've not taken a defensive team yet. But that's because I typically hold off on those to the very, very end. My boy Janu Smith there, okay? absolutely love him this year however i've got two really good tight ends in this draft do i go with a quarterback too i don't typically take a second quarterback still kind of looking through these teams here of or, or these running backs here of what could be throughout not a whole lot that i'm liking wide receiver wise not a ton that i'm liking right now outside of kenny stills kenny stills is a guy who could be a big time playmaker in Houston, especially if Will Fuller would be injured. And honestly, Will Fuller is, is injured more than not. So I'm going to go with Kenny Stills here in the later rounds, a big playmaker that can end up doing some big damage again, if Will Fuller ends up being hurt. And then for the sake of argument, I'll go ahead and go kicker 
and defensive special teams here with my last picks. Defensive special teams, I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos really high this year. Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, guys that can get a lot of sack potential here with the Denver Broncos. Extra points for you. I'll go with the Denver Broncos with my second to last pick. And then with my last pick as a kicker, I'm going to end up going with Matt Prater here over Robbie Gold and uh, and Matt Gay. I like Matt Prater a little bit more uh, because he can hit from a lot deeper, in my opinion. He's a guy that can kick from all over the field, and I really expect a little bit more from that Lions offense this season. So that's going to end up wrapping up the draft here and just kind of break it down. I get a B. I get a B, a high B, 86 out of 100. I'll take that. Drew Brees is my starting quarterback. Saquon Barkley, Leonard Fournette are my running backs. Kenny Galladay, Keenan Allen, Devontae Parker at wide receiver. Evan Ingram at tight end. My flex, Sonny Michelle and Jamison Crowder. I go with the Broncos and Matt Prater. And then for my bench, Latavius Murray, Jared Cook, Gio Bernard, Anthony McFarland, Alan Lazard, Keenan, or Kenny Stills. Uh, not a whole... Okay, so the depth, I don't, I don't love the depth. Mm, depth, we took a lot of bit of kind of a crapshoot at some of these guys at the very end. But my starters... I'm super happy with this team. This is a team that I really think could do a whole lot of damage. I think the B, uh, the B ranking for me again, or the rating, is because of the, my depth on the bench. I think that's a little bit of an issue. But we did add an extra flex spot, so that does take away some of those guys kind of at the beginning of the draft that you might be able to get. But let me know what you think. How do you like the picks? How are you thinking this team would perform in the season? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Pre-order that draft guide. Do all of those things, Headliner Nation. I'll catch you on the next video. Continue to have a great holiday weekend, and I'll see you later.